Hello, let's get straight into this thing. So the first thing I want to show you is how easy it is to create your grocery list based on your menu. So you see the section right here, this is for meals, obviously breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then we just recently added a side dish. Um, we don't normally use side dishes for our dinners, but we wanted the versatility, so we added it. Um, I, don't I don't have any recipes in there yet, but uh, uh, at the end of this video, we're going to go through how to add the recipes, and I'm going to add a side dish. So for now, um, I'd just like to show you how easy it is to select your menu. Most of these are customized, so for breakfast, let's say, you know, Sunday we'd rather have hash browns and eggs than having cereal because we have a little more time on Sunday. Um, and down here, as I change the recipe, the cost estimate for my two weeks worth of groceries will update. Um, and then everything populates on this left-hand side um, in nine different categories. And so once you go through and select your menu, which can take you know five minutes or as long as it can, as long as it takes you to realize what you want to eat um, for these two weeks. So it's it's up to you and how fast you want to do it. But once you've selected your menu, you just hit Control P, and it's ready to print. So uh, it's that easy to make your grocery list. Everything's there, and then you can you know go to your freezer, fridge, find out what you have in there, and so you don't have to buy those. But um, that's your list. So anyway, um, most of your time you're going to be spending right here, just selecting your menu and printing. Uh, but there are some other tabs that I will show you because they are important. Um, the next one is the ingredients tab, and this is where everything's being pulled from. So you see each ingredient in its respective section accompanied with the measuring unit um, and the cost. You can see that some costs are missing because we don't have those costs input, but uh, we don't, are not, we're not using those specific items in any of our recipes, so we haven't taken the time to get those costs. Um, all these costs are based on Fred Meyer's website just because we have one close and they tend to be a little more expensive than like Winco where we typically go. So when our grocery bill is less than what it's showing, it's kind of exciting. We you know, pat ourselves on the back that we saved some money. Um, so anyway, none of this you're really going to want to change. You don't need to add anything. Um, there's actually another way to add stuff. So this pretty, money, pretty much want to be left alone. Uh, the third tab that you want to know about is the data tab. The only thing that should ever be messed with in this tab are the measurements. And you can change or add measurements up to this orange line because that's what the program can read. So, um, so just depending on how you want to do your recipes and what measuring types you want to do. But it's important to kind of make it generic so that each individual recipe or uh, is, it pulls the same number. So you don't want to use pounds of chicken breast in one and ounces of chicken breast in another because now you're trying to buy ounces and pounds. So you want to just do it all in pounds, which you can see, you know, chicken in pounds. And then we have a lot of our canned goods in ounces because canned, like diced tomatoes, can come in smaller cans and larger cans, but they're still ounces, so you can figure out how much that you need. So you want to leave that generic. Um, the other part of this data tab is you can go to and you can see which meals cost what amount. And that was big because we didn't realize how some of our stuff, how much it costs. <clears throat> I thought some of these things like Megan's chicken and rice, I thought that was a cheap meal, but it was, it's almost $20 for our family. So uh, this also kind of puts right in your face what costs more money than others. So this is a, a good reference, just come check it out and this will kind of go with it. Um, anyway, so what I wanna do now is that you have the basics down. I wanna show you how to add a recipe because obviously all your recipes aren't gonna be in there. All the recipes that I have are hidden. They're all down here, all of these, they're all individual tabs and I hide them because I don't want this thing cluttered. I also don't want to go in and accidentally mess with it. So I'll unhide this cereal real quick and I kind of show you how this works. So this is a populated recipe, which you'll never actually have to go to, but it's nice to see that's there. 
Um, and it's, again, it's customized for our family. So we have one person in our family that can't have dairy. So when we have cereal, we actually we have to add dairy-free milk for him. Um, so again, you can you can customize it completely. So let's say you want to do if you do like Blue Apron, you can have just a meal of Blue Apron and um, your ingredient could be Blue Apron and it doesn't cost anything because you've already paid for it. So that could take up one of your meals. There's also Thrive. So if you use Thrive food, like we use, uh, we, I know we grab beans from Thrive constantly. And so we could put uh, an ingredient as Thrive. So every time we use a recipe that has that, it'll throw that into the grocery list. And so we'll know, okay, well the next two weeks I'm gonna need this much of that product. So it's very versatile, um, like, like dad's spaghetti sauce. It costs zero because we've already made it and it's in another thing. So when we have a recipe that calls for dad's spaghetti sauce, like in our grocery list, I've got 96 ounces of my spaghetti sauce that we need for the recipes that are in there. So then I can look in my freezer and make sure I've got 96 ounces. And if I don't, then I have to make sure that I've got dad's spaghetti sauce in my menu so that I can make some more. Uh, so it's very versatile. As, as far as that goes, um, there's one side that my one that I kind of know from heart is my super healthy mac and cheese. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this for you and you can kind of come along for the ride. So what you do to add a recipe is one, you just you name it something. And if you name it something that's already there, it'll tell you and then you just have to name it something else. So you you name it and then you select from the drop down menu the recipe type. So we're gonna make it a side dish since I don't have any side dishes. And then you just click on insert new recipe. And this little window pops up. So what it did is it made this tab, this mac and cheese tab, and then it brought this up, which you don't have to know anything about, but it's nice to know that it's there because it's gonna hide it at the end and you'll never have to see it, but it is there in case you need to go in and unhide it and you can make changes to it. So anyway, so the first thing, first ingredient in my mac and cheese is healthy heavy cream. And you can just search for pieces of words. So you type in whatever ingredient you want and you hit search ingredients. And then it's the items that are in that ingredients list pop up right here. So I want heavy cream, so I click that. You can see the measurements showing up. And I have two cups of heavy cream. And then I click down here, add ingredients selected. And now I just added heavy cream on my list. You can see it pop up right there. The next item is chicken broth. So chicken broth, 24 ounce chicken broth. Try to go through this quickly. I need some cheddar cheese, one and a half cups of cheddar cheese. Uh, next, I need some jack cheese. Oh, there's jack cheese. One cup of jack cheese. I need Parmesan. Parmesan is some good cheese. Need salt. Some of these like salt's not really that big a deal because the cost isn't much, but you know, if it does show up on your grocery list and flag you and you're out, it'll remind you that you need to get some salt. Pepper, one tablespoon of pepper can't have my mac and cheese without bacon. So eight ounces of bacon, add. And then the final topping is Ritz crackers. Oh, so I don't have Ritz crackers in my ingredients. So here's how we do, how we add an ingredient to this. So we type it in, we just, we want Ritz crackers. And you click the use and you add it. So if it's not in there, this extra little green window pops up. You pick, you select what category. Um, I'm gonna put it in pantry. Our unit of measure is gonna be those packages. Uh, you can add a cost now, later. Um, I'm So Mike, I think they're usually about $4 for a box of four. So a dollar a piece for one, each one of those sleeves. And then add ingredient. Now this little thing pops up to remind you that all you did was put it into the ingredients tab. You haven't actually put it in the recipe yet. So you can see the Ritz crackers actually got placed in the ingredients tab right there. So, okay, this will come back up. You can now search 
a writs and it's right there and we need one package and add ingredient selected so that's everything so exit out and if I go over to side dish my mac and cheese is there and it's that simple it's it, 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 adding ingredients they're ready to go if all your costs are in there for your ingredients the cost is gonna update it's gonna put whatever you need over there so my dairy I've got eight and a half cups of cheddar cheese that I'm gonna need for the next two weeks to, from what I've got on there um, we like cheese so anyway I uh, hope you like the tutorial on how easy this is um, if you have any questions feel free to ask me and uh, I will respond as best I can. So thanks again.